Welcome to It's a Crime, I'm Linda, and today we're going to be talking about some new information in the Lori Vallow Daybell case. I'm also going to talk a little bit about some of the patterns that are showing up that I'm sure most of you are aware of, and maybe some patterns that you haven't even thought of. But before I get started, if you'd like to be part of the It's a Crime community, please click that subscribe button and hit that notification bell. Also, if you would like to be part of my Crime Ring, the new membership that I just launched, you can check that out by clicking that join button right beside the subscribe button. I have a little video on what it entails if you're interested. Click that like button if you support this video and also share it where you can. With that being said, let's get into it. Here's JJ and Ty Lee. These are the two most important people surrounding this whole entire case. But this case is starting to look like one horrible soap opera that just doesn't want to end. JJ is only seven years old and Tylee is 17. Tylee was last seen at Yellowstone National Park on September 8th, 2019. And JJ was last seen on September 23rd, 2019, which was his last day of school as he was pulled from it by Lori Vallow. So the biggest question is, are they alive? or aren't they alive? And where are they? And the obvious answer is they need to be found either way, right? There has been a lot of debate about this. And even I go back and forth as well. I will be doing another video on that, maybe tomorrow or the next day, speaking more about that and some of the clues or hints that I see. But before I get into these patterns and the new information, I just want to touch a little bit on this. And something that really struck me was when Lori was in front of the judge in Hawaii and her lawyer actually spoke a little bit about why she doesn't want to produce the children. And he said the reason why is because if she does, then the children are going to be taken away from her and in foster care. Here's a clip. With, and the order was also mischaracterized. Um, that order didn't say simply produce your children in Idaho court. It pretty much said bring your children so that we, the government, can take the children and put them in foster care. And that's the reason why she's fighting that order. So maybe that's the reason why she's not saying anything any further and lawyers are looking into it. Although. Lori now has some bigger bananas to fry because she just keeps getting deeper and deeper into trouble. And in my opinion, had the kids not disappeared, she most likely would have gotten away with murder and attempted murder. And Chad too. But Lori seems more than revengeful and she had to go take her revenge out on her kids, whether they're hiding or missing. And all for what seems like the almighty dollar. So here's the latest info. Turns out, Lori tried to interfere with Charles's insurance policy months before he died. She actually got the password changed. And Charles caught that and sent a letter to the insurance company. This is what it said. Recently, someone called into your office on February 20th, 2019, according to, and then it's redacted, and set a pin on my account. It was not me or anyone I asked to do this. I suspect it was my soon-to-be ex-wife, Lori Vallow. If I can get a copy or transcript or recording of the call, it would help in my legal matter with her. I have enclosed the notarized change of beneficiary form and change of address. I did not place a pin on my account, but once this is settled, I would like to do so. I would like only Ethel K. Woodcock, which is his sister, Nicholas Vallow or Zachary Vallow, which is his sons, to have access to this policy information. Please confirm receipt of this email as I will FedEx the original today. Then in another email it says, I just tried to change my beneficiary on my life policy to my sister. I was notified by the insurance company that a password was placed on the account on February 20th. They are doing an investigation and will lull the voice recording. I assure you it was Lori. I will update you with the findings. I've been locked out of my own life policy until further notice. If anything should happen to me before I get all this fixed, my beneficiary is Ethel Kathleen Woodcock, my sister. She will use it to take care of JJ. I want nothing to go to Lori or any member of her family. Sincerely, Charles Vallow. 
So it's not looking good on Lori now, is it? She allegedly changes the password to Charles's policy. And this is the same time that she was missing for 58 days. At the end of January, she got into a huge fight with Charles and some other things. And she takes off for the 58 days. And during this time, she changes this password. This is also just after the time that she told Charles that if he gets in the way of her and her beliefs, that she's going to stop him by killing him. And all we know is that she spent time in Hawaii with Tylee during these 58 days and a little bit time with Alex Cox at his home in Arizona. And Charles believed that she was going to go to Idaho to meet up with Chad for a preparing a people seminar, but then backed out at the last minute for some reason is what Charles said, because he was going to serve her some papers. So even though she's quite manipulative, uh, she's not very smart at this point. She's just connected herself to Charles's death with all this that's going on. And obviously the authorities know more than we do. And I'm not sure if you heard of this or not. I haven't done this video yet on this channel, but there was a body cam footage of Lori at the cops talking about her missing purse and how Charles stole her purse. So it makes me think, oh, she got really mad at him, so she has to get him back by, you know, changing his policy or, or mucking around with that. And she had a plan because he's getting in her way, so she had to change life, life policy to make sure she got the money. But the funny thing is, just going back to this body cam footage, she talked about how she needs her purse, but most importantly, she needed her lip gloss out of the purse. My friend that's a police officer, he said, go file a report, file a restraining order, all stuff. I don't want to do all that stuff. I just wanted to be on record. And if you can get the purse back, that would be lovely because all my stuff is in there. I'm really mad about my lip gloss. <laughs> <laughs> what about all credit cards? Uh, well, he has all the cards with all the yeah. stuff. So he's mad because I took the money out of our account. But it's a joint account, so he wants me to give him money. So it's like, oh, oh, you stole my lip gloss? That's it. To the gallows you go because nobody messes with me and my lip gloss or my lipstick. So that's the new little info for you. And now I'm gonna do a little deeper dive just into the patterns that I'm seeing and I'm sure you are most likely seeing like I mentioned, but maybe there's some that you haven't and there's one in here that actually I find really fascinating. I don't know why, but I'll let you know what I mean in a minute. So the first pattern is the obvious, follow the money. And Tylee's biological dad, Joseph Ryan, died in 2018 from a heart attack. And Lori is attached to that money from a few sources. Even Lori had mentioned that she got the money from Joseph Ryan's death. It's not clear how much that amount is. And they weren't even married at the time. Charles and Lori were married, but According to Joseph's sister, Annie, she said that she had no doubt in her mind that he would have had money put away for Tylee. Now, also what Lori was overheard saying was she called Joseph Ryan evil and that God took care of him. And in documents, it was noted that Lori said death would be an option before letting Tylee see his dad. Oops, Lori, that was supposed to be your inside voice. And I do wonder just how much Joseph Ryan's policy was. And I wonder if it was in trust for Tylee or how that worked. I also wonder where it was deposited because Lori and Charles were married at the time. And I wonder if Charles actually knew about that money. Then 15 months later, Lori's fourth husband, Charles Fallow, gets killed in self-defense. And because Lori's little tampering of the password, she probably thought she had it locked down when it came to the insurance policy. But little did she know that Charles actually fixed that and remedied it. Unfortunately, it cost him his life. And in Lori's mind, she thought she hit the jackpot at this point because once he dies, she's gonna become a millionaire. So a few days after Charles dies, she calls the insurance company and, oops, sorry, Lori, you're not the beneficiary. 
So she gets super choked because the money actually went to Charles' sister, Kay. So what does she do? She has a giant hissy fit and she gets super mad at Kay, sends her a mad text, and then all of a sudden she takes away what's most important to Larry and Kay, and that's their little grandson, JJ. Because all of a sudden, the communication between the two, where they used to connect all the time on FaceTime, starts dwindling down and then cuts off right away. I guess that shows them, doesn't it, Lori? Now, also, I just want to note, and I've had it in previous videos, that Lori also took a bunch of money out of Charles Vallow's business account in January before the password was changed. She just basically wiped him out, left him with next to no money. He had to even pay payroll and wasn't able to do so. And when she went on her 58-day hiatus, Charles was looking after JJ, um, while she took off with Tylee and she leaves him with next to no money, which is pretty darn heartless. So then by November, Lori marries husband number five, Chad, and she sees more dollar signs. Chad's wife of 30 years, Tammy, dies because of a bad cough and naturally dies in her sleep, according to Chad. But what does he do? He ups her life insurance right before her death and substantially ups it. And he receives $430,000 in that life insurance. Then also a prosecutor mentioned that Lori continued to collect social security benefits in her children's name after they were last seen. So it's all about the mighty dollars to her. Cha-ching. So the biggest question around this money situation and pattern is, I wonder if Lori had life insurance on JJ and Tylee, because that would be a huge clue leading to what happened to the kids. She's very, very, very money motivated. And if she does in fact have a life insurance policy on those children, then it does not look good and we know most likely what happened. And the other question I wonder is if Alex had a policy on him and or if Lori had an insurance policy on Alex or if Alex did and who that beneficiary was because that's another big clue to the puzzle. So it's clear that this is all money motivated in Lori's eyes but now there's other patterns and clusters of information. For example, there was the cluster of marriages. Lori, her brother Alex, and her niece, Melanie, all get married in November. But what is the big rush? Why did they all get married together? And Chad and Lori first got married in Hawaii on November 5th. But then at the end of November, within one day apart, Melanie Boudreaux gets married to Ian Pulowski. The next day, Alex gets married to Zulima Pastanis. And notable is Alex actually takes Zulima's last name. But it was also noted that Alex and Zulima's marriage was very businesslike and I think it lasted all of eight minutes long. And so I asked myself, why all at once? Why is there this big rush to all get married in November? I find that not a coincidence. Now I have talked about a little bit about the deaths surrounding money. But I do have to mention this as well. Lori waits to tell anybody about these deaths. So we have Joseph Ryan and Charles Vallow. And Lori waits to tell their families about their death. When it comes to Joseph Ryan, Lori was next of kin that the medical examiner's office had. And she didn't tell Joseph's sister Annie or the family about his death for weeks. And Annie was saying that she was so shocked because they had been friends for the 16 years that they've known each other. And the other weird thing about this was when Annie did find out, she flew to see Tylee to support her there. And she said Lori and Tylee were kind of butting heads. So there was some conflict going on. And Lori wouldn't let Tylee talk about her dad. And just some strange things that were said, according to what Annie said, she said Lori was was doing some crazy and talking crazy. There was also no funeral at all for Joseph. 
So Lori waits to tell Joseph's family that he's dead. And then Lori waits 36 hours to let Charles's sons know that their father died. And how does she do it? Through a text. And she had been married to Charles for around 13 or 14 years, even though they had split for the last six months. Pretty brutal if you ask me. And Charles's boys had questions and she didn't answer them about the circumstances of his death. She was actually telling people that he died from a heart attack. Certain people anyways. But now we know in the body cam that it was self-defense from Alex. And no, it wasn't. And the other thing I read was one of Charles's sons told a news outlet that Lori refused to provide the information to them about their dad's memorial service and where his body was. And so the boys actually were able to track down the mortuary where Charles was and was being held. And they described it as a super strange encounter there. They said, one of the kids says, the funeral director was very shaky and nervous. We asked him for information and he said something like, I can't tell you that. It was requested that I tell you nothing. Even Colby found out later, I believe it was a few days later from that or just a little while later and he was shocked to find out about Charles and he was told that Charles had a heart attack. Now, interestingly, Joseph was cremated and Alex was also cremated. It's not clear if Charles was or not. I need to verify this, but something interesting about that. The authorities are now looking into Joseph Ryan's death and I don't blame them. Some pretty shady things when you start to string this all together. So here's another pattern uh, moving into a different town and in the same complex. The three musketeers, which is Lori, Melanie, and Alex, all move to the same city and all in the same town home complex and at the same time. Another pattern was there was requests for custody from both Charles and Brandon. Charles back in the January, February mark re after Lori takes off, he requests for custody of JJ and then also with all that crap that happened with Brandon Boudreaux when he had an attempt made on his life, he also asked the court for full custody of his four children and requested that Melanie not see the kids without supervision. Now, one more thing that I forgot to mention back in the money stuff, when Brandon had an attempt made on his life, he had a $1 million policy as well. So here's the weird pattern that I saw, and this doesn't necessarily mean it means anything, but it was very unique when I found it. So I wanted to see a map of where all these cities that they're talking about was involved. And when I plug in Gilbert, Arizona, Springville, Utah, and Rexburg, Idaho, it all forms a straight line and like almost exactly a straight line. I thought, well, that's weird. And then in my nerdy thinking, I thought, what if I kept going straight up? What would, like, what's above there? And obviously I see Montana, but where would that next place be? And I saw it's around Helena, and then also north of that was Great Falls. And then if you go back down a little bit and over, it's also Bozeman. So I'm very curious about this because of this straight line. It, I mean, it could be nothing, but I just found that super strange to have it exactly like that. And I thought, I wonder what's up in Montana. And in Montana, there is tons of forest and tons of places you could hide. But I don't know with their beliefs where Montana fits. So if you do know the answer, I would love to know in the comments below. Let's have a chit chat about it. Now, another thing is the pattern for Lori is the way she comes across and her behavior is very inappropriate, I think we could say. She smirks a lot, which we know on camera with Nate Eaton when he was interviewing her, smirking in the courtroom and Charles dies and she is laughing it up like, <laughs> oh, we just 
just moved in. And that's really strange when somebody that you have loved for over a decade is now dead. Super, super strange. And we've seen this over and over with Lori. And even the authorities said her demeanor and Ty Lee's and Alex was super strange in the car ride to the police. Um, just all these little things don't really add up. And I just find her behavior super weird or super normal in her terms. But people did say that she was an incredible mom before and she was very devoted to the kids until 2018 she started to change and that's exactly the same time that she met up with chad daybell and between the both of them they're made for each other from the looks of it but the demeanor is off so i just thought i would throw that in there you guys already have seen her demeanor is weird but you know how she does one thing is how she does everything so she doesn't really care too much about anything except for herself, Chad, and the money. Let me know in the comments below if you've seen some patterns as well that I haven't mentioned on here. I'm sure there's a lot more and we'll chat about it. Please subscribe if you haven't done so already. If you'd like to join the membership, it's a lot of fun and I made sure to keep it affordable. Click the like button to support this video and share it out where you can. Thank you so much for watching. See you soon.